It is a gorgeous Saturday afternoon on the campus of Stanford University and a perfect day for Pac-12 men's soccer. Welcome to the farm where the UCLA Bruins are in town as they are set to square off against the third ranked Stanford Cardinal. Always fun whenever these two teams get together and historically UCLA has dominated this series, but of late the Card have had the upper hand as they have, as they have won the last eight meetings Bruins have not beaten the Cardinal since 2013. They haven't scored against Stanford since 2018. And we welcome you inside Larry Q. Kagan Stadium, everyone. Troy Clarity, very happy that you are with us. Hope you're staying healthy, staying safe, and masking up. Stanford's 4-0-0 on the season, but their winning result at San Diego last week didn't come easy, but it came off the foot of this young man, Gabe Segal, who is the reigning Pac-12 Player of the Week. And this is the reason why. Down at San Diego State, game had just gone to overtime. Charlie Wynn finding Seagal. Watch this angle. How does he get it through there? He does in the 91st minute. And Stanford, the only goal they would need on the day, knocked off San Diego State last week. That was a big goal for Seagal. Big goals all season long for that guy, Zach Ryan. His four goals leads the Stanford squad. Started the season on a three-game scoring streak. Adjusted to becoming a marked man in 2019. And Stanford head coach Jeremy Gunn says right now, Ryan is as complete a player as he's ever been. For the UCLA Bruins, they are led in part by Riley Furch. He's a fun player to watch. As a freshman in 2019, he had nine assists, tied for most in the Pac-12. Flew under the radar a little bit last year, not anymore. Can he adjust to having a bit more attention thrown his way? Well, Stanford versus UCLA makes everyone pay attention, no matter the sport. Bruins, Cardinal, men's soccer, straight ahead on the Pac-12 Network. You're watching Pac-12 Bay Area, home of the Cal Bears and the Stanford Cardinal, available on Xfinity. When I was growing up, it was evident that I had a genetic issue in the way that my knees were formed. We really saw an opportunity to restore his anatomy by stabilizing his kneecap, as well as undoing the arthritis that he had developed. One of the concerns I had seeking surgery was the fact that we're currently in a pandemic. At Stanford, we're taking the highest level of precautions. This includes social distancing, mask wearing, extra cleaning, as well as video visits. Adventure is calling. You may know it as the open road, a weekend getaway, or just getting away from it all. You've heard the call. Felt the urge to conquer the off-road, the craving of new trails to blaze, the desire to just keep driving. We know because we've gotten the call too. We look forward to seeing you out there. The only adventure sales event is happening now. Land Rover, above and beyond. The Harry's Razor is not the same. because some of us are not the same. Our close shave comes from our five German-engineered blades designed to start sharp and stay sharp. And we never upcharge you for high quality. So for those of us who don't want just the same, Harry's razors are here. Harry's, not the same. Available in-store and at harrys.com. The hard work of an elite athlete pays off with team victories. But Cardinal fans don't have to work nearly as hard to earn your own rewards. The Stanford Athletics Fan Rewards Credit Card earns up to 3% cash back with every purchase. And the new Visa Signature status means you'll enjoy premium rewards, perks, and discounts. Stanford Federal Credit Union, the official credit card partner of Stanford Athletics. Learn more at sfcu.org slash carry the card. Pac-12 men's soccer is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hoover Tower in the heart of the campus of Stanford University, just up the way from Kagan Stadium, where we are about to bring you UCLA versus Stanford men's soccer style. Stanford at 4-0-0 on the season. 2-0-0 in Pac-12 play, tied for the top spot entering today's action, while UCLA 1-2-1 on the year and 0-1-1 in Pac-12 play. The Cardinal and the Bruins 
Off we go. Enjoy the match. Stanford with the overtime win down at San Diego State, as mentioned at the top of the show, also with wins over Pacific, the University of San Francisco, and Cal. And so far, they have outscored their opponents 13 to 1. A lot going right for the Cardinal overall at this point. Meanwhile, for the UCLA Bruins, there is their head coach, Ryan Jordan. UCLA with a bit of youth as you look at their starting 11, but Coach Jordan, a big fan right now of his back line. With Ahmed Longmire, a transfer, helping to lead things. Vasquez, Bachland, and Reveno starting alongside Longmire along that back line. And of course, the veteran keeper, Justin Garces. Played back to Garces. As Longmire starts it up and gets it back. And Garces plays it forward. A challenge in the air, out of bounds. And a bit of a tangle on the far side with Jeremy Gunn, the Stanford head coach, looking on. Jack O'Brien in the starting 11 as he has been there up front for the Cardinal all season long. So this will be his fourth game started this year. No Oseni Buddha, still out with an injury. Hopefully he is back by the second half of the season. That is the prognosis for Buddha at this point. Cleared momentarily for the Cardinal, but it gets beyond. Jack O'Brien playing it back. And down underneath us, Andrew Aprahamian sending it forward in Zach Ryan's direction, but overshoots, and it rolls to Garces. Garces with a 10-save performance at Cal in the 2019 season. What a, what a bizarre game that was, that, that Halloween night over in Berkeley. In his career against the Cardinal, three games started 0-3 with five saves and five goals allowed. Smothered for a moment, Grace and Duty in the middle to try to get it. And can't get off a clean shot. That was Furch at the top of the 18, who just couldn't quite find the footing. The sophomore originally started his collegiate career at Florida Atlantic, but transferred to UCLA and, and had an impact. Was hampered a little bit by injury during the 2019 season, but came through with with many fantastic assists, clutch assists for the Bruins along the way, and made an impact right from the start. On a gorgeous 61 degree afternoon here at Stanford. Of course, no fans here at, Q K K K at Q Kagan Stadium at this point, as we are in Santa Clara County. The turn, and not quite enough on that shot. As Stanford with its first look. Gabe Segal, talked about him at the start of the show, the sophomore from Bethesda, Maryland. Knocked out of bounds, Stanford to throw it in. Seagal with three goals this season. And while Zach Ryan leads Stanford in scoring, it's been a, a team effort for the most part. As that one is saved along the back line for a moment, but nope, ruled out of bounds, and UCLA will get the goal kick. Jack O'Brien in the middle of things, the senior from Broomfield, Colorado. He scored against UCLA in 2018. That's the only goal of his Cardinal career to this point. O'Brien did not play in Stanford's 1-0 win at San Diego State last week, a win in which the Cardinal were a bit short-handed personnel-wise. A couple of guys carrying some injuries. Jeremy Gunn said that they were down to bare bones. But able to get it done down at San Diego State. Not an easy place to win if you're the road team. Garces calls and smothers it along the back line.
Garces the junior, which somewhat surprises me a bit. It seems like he's been down at UCLA for, for much longer, but his veteran presence, his leadership, Ryan Jordan says forms a foundational structure for UCLA defensively. And Garces very active, plays well with his feet. And does many things very, very well. Nobody home for UCLA. Abrahamian on the move. Tommy Silva gets there first. And UCLA to throw it in. Silva, a freshman from Tucson. And Ryan Jordan also singled him out when I asked him for standouts to this point in the young season for the Bruins. Off of Keegan Hughes's foot. Bruins started the season with a 3-0 win over the University of San Francisco back on February 8th. But looking for their first win since then. A loss at 15th ranked LMU, 1-0. They had a couple of fantastic chances down the stretch of that one, but couldn't cash in. Had a draw against San Diego State, and then had the lead in Corvallis last week at Oregon State, but the Beavers responded with two goals in the final 20 minutes of the game to win. Jordan noting that maybe a little bit of youth and guys getting acclimated and in situations where they're new to things. And of course, it also didn't help out matters much that they had the player sent off with a red card. So those two things helping to send the Bruins to the loss column last week, but they would love to get a, a tremendous win here against Stanford and perhaps stake its claim to being in the upper tier of the Pac-12. Off of Furch's foot, Stanford to throw it in. Towards Ryan, who's hit from behind. Zach Ryan, redshirt junior, Chatham, New Jersey. All Pac-12 honorable mention in 2019. Led Stanford with 10 goals that season, leading Stanford with four goals this season so far. And Stanford-UCLA tends to be a very physical matchup. Uh, Source soccer players at the end of it all whenever these two teams walk off the pitch. Towards the back post, headed back. Trying for the ball, he doesn't get it. Looking for a bit of room. Keegan Hughes, a picture perfect dispossession. Keegan Hughes, a sophomore, but doesn't necessarily play like it. Actually, he didn't play like a freshman very much last year along that back line for Stanford. Anchored for so many years by, by Tanner Beeson. But now it's guys like Keegan Hughes along with Keegan Tingey helping to hold it down across the back for the Cardinal. There's Andrew Thomas. The Cardinal keeper from London, England, was all Pac-12 first team, two years running, both in 2018 and 2019. And his big moment of the 2019 season, he had many, but stopping those four penalty kicks against Seattle U in the second round of the NCAA tournament, that's as clutch as it gets. Schwartz Silva off his foot with O'Brien challenging. Brian, to Mark Fisher, a newcomer to the starting 11 for the Cardinal. He's a redshirt freshman, so he's not necessarily a newcomer to the program. Silva's been active in the early going. And he 
has it again for a moment, slides it forward in Furch's direction. And Abrahamian called for the foul. Birch takes a moment, but now he's ready to go. Reveno on the far side, finally cleared out by Longmire. Coming down towards Kevin Diaz. A couple of newcomers for UCLA up front with Kevin Diaz and Grayson Duty. Duty, the freshman from Hermosa Beach. Diaz, a junior transfer from Norwalk, California. Came to UCLA from Cerritos College, where he was as dominant a player on that level as, as you're going to find. Ryan chasing, getting some space, and getting it away. Here come the Bruins. Sliding save by Tain will set up the corner kick, the first of the match for the Bruins. Duty with some speed, but Tingy hanging in there, going to ground and sending the ball out of the back line. Tingy, the sophomore from Danville, California. He's been playing well, according to Cardinal head coach Jeremy Gunn. His dad, Tanner, played rugby at UCLA. So maybe some split feelings in the Tingy household today. Corner kick, left foot, back post. In traffic, and finally shut down. That was headed towards, I believe, Longmire, who might have had a had a shot at it with the header on the back side. And then the mixer, nothing could come of it for the Bruins. UCLA picked fifth. Pac-12 preseason poll last year. Check that picked fourth in the Pac-12 preseason poll. Stanford picked to finish second. Very tight at the top of the preseason poll with Washington making out the Cardinal by just one point. Ryan fights off one, trying to fight off another. And from the backside, he has it taken away. I believe that was Jose Sosa with Furch on the ground again. Another look, Ryan Ludwig. A little nudge in the back. We'll get a whistle from the referee every once in a while, and that's that's part of what Ryan Jordan told me about in preparation for this match with Riley Furch flying a bit under the radar and and Ryan said, look, Riley, you might have, you might be the leader in fouls committed against this year because you're going to have a whole lot more attention on you this season. Ryan, Ryan, let's go. But off to the right and a bit too high. Zach Ryan with visions of his fifth goal of the season dancing in his head. And just had that little itty bitty crease, that little small window. Not a bad idea. Coming down to Ludwig. Bruins control. Longmire and Vasquez trading it amongst each other. Vasquez, injury riddled road for him of late, but he is, is back, and torn ACL, also struggled with COVID. But did not play at all in the 2019 season. Abrahamian defensively working on Diaz, but Diaz keeping it alive. Off goes Furch. Furch has an option outside, but it's shut down. In the box, Thomas comes up and gets it. Well, Furch just has a knack for placing it where guys can have chances at scoring. And maybe that one was just perhaps a bit of a step ahead, but an illustration of why he was the co-leader in the Pac-12 with nine assists in the 2019 season. Yeah. 
Whistle against Ryan. Silva showing for it, but Vasquez keeps it and instead sends it back to Ahmed Longmire, the junior transfer from Las Vegas. Came to UCLA from Utah Valley. Ahead towards Grayson Duty, but shut down Ting and Hughes both in the area. Team All Whack in the 2019 season. Very decorated player from that conference. Whack is always an intriguing conference to watch. Seattle U has had NCAA postseason success. That's coming down. But handled by Tingy. for a moment or so, but then finally the whistle with the collision, Birch involved there. And the Cardinals started off. Glad you're with us here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Had some overnight, had an overnight rainstorm move through the Bay Area. That was a bit of a surprise, but no traces of that now. Weather should not be a factor here today. Attempted the switch, broken up by Silva. Thomas just lets it roll out and will execute the goal kick. Garces calls for it and gets it. Sizes things up and finds Vasquez. Bruins being patient. Getting Garces involved with Ryan chasing, and now he sends it forward towards Furch. Met by Ludwig. towards Diaz, but Hughes was there. Out of bounds, Cardinal to throw it in. Intercepted on the far side, and the Bruins will throw it in once more. Well, talking to Jeremy Gunn, and I asked him, look, the team started off 4-0-0, and things overall seem to be going quite well, but where can this team improve? What are the, the points of improvement for the Cardinal here in the early going of the season? And he said, well, things I'm going to be watching include this. I mean, can we see the full field? It's hard to do that when you can't practice 11-on-11, 11 11, as was the case for much of the ramp-up for Stanford for the season. Can the Cardinal get better in the air? It's hard to do that when you can't really practice set pieces, as was the case for much of the run-up to the season. I also wanted to see the Cardinal improve in tackling and being defenders one-on-one. -on -one. So it was intriguing to hear his thoughts on that and how those things he wanted to see improve for Stanford this season correlated to some of the limitations that, that he had to deal with being here in Santa Clara, which has been Santa Clara County, rather, which has been one of the more strict counties with its COVID-19 related protocols and, and health guidelines. But it was, it was intriguing to, to hear that correlation between those two. He said, look, you know, is it frustrating on some levels? Yes, but he wanted to make sure to express his gratitude and gratefulness for the people who did everything that they possibly could and all the efforts that went into things like this happening here today. Stanford being able to take the pitch against UCLA with everyone being able to play men's soccer up and down the Pac-12. Back to Garces. Vasquez turned, marked by Fisher. 
preferred. And that might get a booking. It does. Ludwig coming in on Riley Furch. Another look. Went down low. Got the bump as well. Yeah. So Ryan Ludwig goes in the book with the yellow card. Junior from York, Pennsylvania. This again. Intercepted. Hughes. But the Bruins get it back. I mentioned that the Bruins had a, had a red card issue against them last week. Luke Bone got called for a couple of yellows. The second one, late in the contest, UCLA had to play short the rest of the way. Vasquez. Back to Garces again. And now finally sent forward by Longmire, aiming for Grayson Duty. Just overshot. Thomas saying, hey, give me some help here. Finally rolls it out. Eric Bachlin from Norway with the throw in. Cardinal on the spot. Ryan. Hit from behind, but another foul called closer to the 18. Just outside the 18. Another look, the initial collision with Ryan and Noah handball. Ben Revenu had that one just bounce off the, the back of his hand. Inadvertent, of course, but spotted by the official. So a set piece opportunity for the Cardinal just outside the 18. Stanford so lethal on set pieces over the years. Here's Garces directing traffic. The wall getting set. Nothing gets through you. Off we go. Doesn't get through the wall. Set back. Scrambling, Garces is able to, to get it back. Well, a, a lot of things, and speaking from experience from a long, long, long time ago, a lot of things go through your head when you're standing in the wall, wondering where that ball is, is going to go. And sometimes it comes right at you. You just have to absorb it. Hope for the best. High spinner from Longmire falls out of bounds. Cardinal trying to get things going quickly. Abrahamian sends it back towards Thomas. Shot Jack O'Brien for a second. He battled Silva. And UCLA will throw it in. And a bit of a shove by Andrew Paoli, sending a Cardinal to the ground. Paoli from San Jose, just right down the road. Outside, Abrahamian can't catch up with it. Oh, 
both teams probing and testing, trying to find a way forward. Hasn't come easy. Then again, we didn't expect it to on either side. Chipped forward. Cam Silly out to Will Richmond. Richmond has three goals this year, by the way. Eye of the box, Ryan trying to fight for it. Instead, headed out by UCLA Longmire. Tries to finish. Finally sent out by Irik Bachlin. Trying to fight off the defender. Reveno sending Ryan to the turf. Ryan Jordan in his second year leading UCLA as we take another look. At the contact from the backside, and Ryan says, no, no, don't call that. Well, okay. But Jordan in his second year leading UCLA was previously the head coach at Pacific from 2013 to 2018. And he actually led the biggest single season turnaround in Division I men's soccer history while in Stockton. High ball headed towards Garces. Only one Cardinal in the area believed that was O'Brien. Garces able to, able to win that battle. 2015, Ryan Jordan. And Pacific went 115 and 1. The next season, under Jordan, Pacific went 13, 4, and 2. Just a tremendous, tremendous turnaround. Jordan tasked with bringing UCLA back consistently into the upper tier in the, in the Pac 12 Men's Soccer Conference. A reminder that it's a 16 league. That one just tickled the touch line on the far side. Of course, we've got Washington, Stanford and Cal, UCLA, San Diego State, and Oregon State. There's Jordan. Wants to create an environment with his team that emphasizes relationships and the ability to, to express and ask questions of the coaches. And I asked him, you know, given that, how did that kind of affect how the Bruins dealt with everything that the last coming up on a full calendar year has thrown at us? And you say, well, you know, guys have, have been able to have the support structure, you know, to work things out with themselves, work things out with us. And even without training, they've been able to, to stay focused and to try to keep sharp. And it also helped keep the younger guys buoyant and positive and even throughout the entire situation. You know, so much is, is talked about, and team culture is starting to kind of become a, an overused term these days, it seems, but it's, you can never underestimate its importance. Abrahamian comes up and over near us. Redshirt Jr. from Malvern, Pennsylvania. When the Cardinal won the College Cup in 2017, they did so just 20 miles from Abrahamian's hometown, just outside of Philly. That was the bookend of back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back national championships for the Cardinal, the tree peat as it's called around these parts, rightfully so. Pretty clever. Looking for the turn. And too strong for Abrahamian. Will Richmond was calling for it on the, on the far side, but was not seen. There's Mark Fisher, freshman, redshirt freshman from Michigan. A newcomer to the starting lineup just didn't have enough minutes for him last year. They loved the coaches loved what they saw from Fisher, but they just didn't have enough minutes for him. So he redshirted last season, and 
here he is. And Jeremy Gunn says that Fisher's been top notch and that he and Cam Silly have complimented each other quite well. Midfield, the engine room so critical. Back to Longmire again. Just over 30 minutes in here on the farm. We're scoreless between Stanford and UCLA. Troy Players, glad you're with us. Ryan turns, slides it forward. Erased by the Bruins. Vasquez doing the honors. O'Brien tripped from behind. Silva making the contact. And wipe everything out! Everything out! Cars just making sure everyone is on point. Look behind the net. And we all get set. Will Richmond will be standing over it for the Cardinal with Furch and Sosa being told, hey, give, give, give Will his 10 yards. Off we go. Bending towards the penalty spot, trying to turn, sent right on frame. Garces with the heads up catch. Able to smother that one, Ludwig, in the area. And that was spinning. It appeared that Gabe Segal tried to turn and eventually came to the foot of Ludwig. And Garces, cat quick reflex, is able to shut it down. <laughs> Beats one. But doesn't get past Amperhamian. Seems like much of the last five minutes or so of this match has been played on this end of the pitch. Yes, Jay. Come on, Jay. Two on one. The two win. Trying to hit O'Brien on the back flick, but didn't quite work. Ryan's still working. Outside. In the box, the shot wide of the net. The window from Will Richmond. Jeremy Gunn says is playing the best of his career right now. That was earmarked for the back post, but just a couple of feet off. Richmond working hard. Meanwhile, Charlie Wien comes in, replacing Jack O'Brien for the Cardinal. First corner kick of the match for the Cardinal. UCLA has had one. Bruins have yet to have a shot of any kind, even on goal. Sized up, Nothing too far. Silva shielding Watch Richmond. Who's it off of? Goal kick. Scoreless here from the farm. Stanford has been able to put a couple of shots in the last couple of minutes as the pace has picked up just a little bit. But no one able to break through just yet. Silva trying to find the back side, not quite. With grace and duty looming and crashing towards the back post. Yeah. With also Riley Furch not far behind. So a corner kick opportunity coming up for the Bruins. 
Substitution for UCLA. Kevin Diaz comes out. Eric Alaski comes on, the senior from Escondido, California. Alaski carrying a bit of an injury. He's still working to get up to speed. Was drafted by Vancouver, number 46 overall in the MLS draft in January. Towards Alaski. Knocked out. Bachlin sizes it up, keeps it on the ground. And Thomas smothers it, stopping the opportunity. Andrew Thomas saw that one all the way. And a good idea from Bachlin, too, to keep that one perhaps low to ground. Eric Olaski, two-time All-Pac-12 honorable mention, and he's the last Olaski standing. As for a time, you had three of them on the Bruins roster, Brian and Milan. In fact, Brian and Milan teamed up on Eric's golden goal to beat San Diego State back in 2017. That was Eric's first collegiate goal. But we haven't seen much of Eric Olaski so far this year. He played just 44 minutes combined. And two games worth of work coming into today. Ryan Jordan and the Bruins still, still working him into the fold. Foul called. UCLA will get it going. There's Cam Silly. His lone collegiate point came against the Bruins in 2019. That was an assist. Back to Garces with Wien giving chase. Slide tackle. Rolls to the Bruins. Paoli. Searching. Silva. Switching. Garza sending it forward to Silva. Good ball to the far side from Sosa. Furch in traffic. Back to Reveno. And right to Andrew Thomas. Well, Jeremy Gunn happy overall defensively with what his team has done coming into this match, but he also noted that, look, most of our defending has come from being on the ball. And he said, look, as we, as we go through the Pac-12, we'll certainly get more tests as we go through the season. Crash in midfield, he play on. Skipped forward to the touch line, looking for the angle, in traffic, slides it through and scores! Right place, right time for Keegan Tingy, his second goal of the year, and the card go up 1-0. The give and go between Richmond and Tingy. And then Richmond says, hey, Keegan, right back at you. And the sophomore from Danville, California, puts it through. A couple kids from the East Bay getting it done. Will Richmond from Piedmont, California. And the Cardinal going up 1-0. And that was well set up the whole way through. Tingy from De La Salle High School, which of course is an athletic powerhouse here in Northern California. 
Seems like no matter what the sport, if you're coming from De La Salle, you're, you're doing big things. That's out of bounds. Of course, no shortage of high schools you can say that about. Down in Southern California, modern day comes to mind. Shy of the midfield stripe, Tingy, the goal scorer, sending it forward. And back to Gar Garces. Carlo Agostinelli is in the match for the Cardinal. He's a redshirt freshman from London, England. So a couple of Londoners on the pitch for Stanford right now with Agostinelli and the Cardinal keeper, Andrew Thomas. Less than five minutes to go in the first half, and the Cardinal with a 1-0 lead. And this is always such a, a critical point of the match. This team is tend to tend to bring in reinforcements and maybe try to get another goal or their first goal on the board before, before the break. Out of bounds, Stanford to throw it in. Jeremy Gunn admitted that he wasn't so sure that they'd be ready to play. He admitted that, you know, at the start of this season, you know, he just had a bunch of blind faith that he had to go on. The, the, the two portions of of development and training, individual development, and being team ready. He felt that the guys were were in relatively good shape individually with their development there, as most of the team stayed on campus through the fall. Couldn't do a whole lot, but still, they were still together. But wasn't sure if they were team ready. In fact, he said, look, we, we weren't team ready at the start of this season, but given the fact that the, that the team largely stayed together throughout the fall, Felt good that they would be competitive and, and ready to go once the whistle blew. So far, so good. Unbeaten, untied. And now on top of UCLA as we are late in the first half. Bruins looking for the equalizer. Silva shoved off the ball. Here comes Abrahamian, who's had some moments. Agostinelli sent out of bounds. That's off of Sosa's foot. White turn! White turn on! Jose Sosa from Anaheim, California, scored a, or played a, got a couple of starts in the NCAA tournament back in 2018. White, everything up! The long throw from Abrahamian. And the goal kick coming up for the Bruins as we approach two minutes remaining in the first half. Substitution coming in for the Bruins with A.J. Vasquez coming off. Ruben Soria replacing him. Soria senior, originally from Culver City. Just right down the 405. Transferred in from Santa Monica College. Two-time all-conference there. And by and large, Ryan Jordan says, has, has done well in his time at UCLA. Played 17 games in 2019. Streaking down the far side. Stopping on the dime. A hard touch. First trying to find it. Arnold had it back for a moment or so. For Reveno, put a stop to all that. Almost sends that one out of the park. Will Richmond to throw it in. Will's dad, Dave, played tennis at Cal. So a house divided, I'm sure, certain days of the year. 
Stanford host count right here at Kago Stadium on March 24th, by the way. Trying to hang on to it. Beyond Garces, the near finish goes off the top of the net. Maybe a, a hard landing for a Cardinal player. Let's take another look with Zach Ryan somehow keeping it playable. And he may have actually taken a boot to the shoulder. It was Charlie Wynn and took that blow to the upper body. But he is okay. And the first half comes to an end. There's your goal scorer, Keegan Tingey, the sophomore from Danville, California. Terrific work as he was well set up by his teammate, Will Richmond. And the Cardinal in the 40th minute, putting one in the back of the net. And as of right now, that is the only score of the game. Stanford with a 1-0 lead over the UCLA Bruins. Halftime festivities coming up in just a few moments. Cardinal with a 1-0 lead over the Bruins at the break. Pac-12 men's soccer is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Start of the second half in just a few moments from Laird Q. Kagan Stadium. The Cardinal with a 1-0 lead over the UCLA Bruins. Troy Clarity, very glad that you are here with us. And a scoring update from Seattle. San Diego State with the upper hand through much of this game until just minutes remained in regulation. Ryan Saylor with the goal in the 90th minute. So that game is tied at two apiece. So we will certainly keep an eye on that as that game has indeed uh, started its overtime period. Meanwhile, here on the farm, the second half is underway. With UCLA trying to find a way into the back of the net. They haven't had many chances at all, but looking to start the second half on the front foot. Meanwhile, the Cardinal playing well defensively, hanging in there, getting the job done, and taking advantage of its opportunity, thanks to Keegan Tingey. But that is only the half of it. Feels good to be doing a little scoreboard watching here already. Set towards Ryan. Ryan taken down just outside the box, but he gets whistled. Ryan gets to his feet. We talked about at the start of the show how he spent much of the 2019 season adjusting to being a marked man. And when he was redshirted, Jeremy Gunn said that Zach channeled all of his frustration of sitting out into becoming a better player. Not unlike some other stories of some players throughout the recent years here in this program for the Cardinal. Foster Langsdorf comes to mind. Guys who redshirted, were frustrated, but somehow used that frustration to their advantage and then took it out on everyone else for the remainder of their Cardinal careers. The switch coming here towards the near side. Furch off his heel. Seagal gets it back outside to Richmond. I thought he might go goalward with that one, but instead finds Richmond. Tries to poke forward. Well done. Going to ground. Pablo Greenlee making the play. And that's out of bounds. Nice job by Pablo Greenlee, the freshman from Hollywood, California. He won league offensive MVP and defender of the year at his high school, Harvard Westlake High School. In his senior season, Harvard Westlake, of course, just one mile from the UCLA campus. But how about that? You win offensive MVP and defender of the year for your team. 
speaks volumes about the versatility of your game, your skill set, and perhaps your mindset too. for a way through. He doesn't get it here after a turnover. Towards Richmond. Richmond, the center, kicked out by UCLA, and the volley well off target. I believe that was Longmire who got a foot in there and sent away the initial centering attempt from Richmond, who is starting to find more footing as we begin the second half. Mark Fisher tried to send it back, but was was well off target. But Ahmed Longmire on the spot for UCLA, as he has been defensively for much of the year to this point. The only field player for UCLA to have played in every minute of the season to this point, Longmire. And too strong. Richmond couldn't get there. As that one spun out of bounds along the back line in the corner. And Jeremy Gunn, the Stanford head coach in his ninth year here on the farm. And he said initially when the, the shutdown began, you know, the, the adage for the team. You know, the program kind of adapted the, the, the Marines' old adage, improvise, adapt, and overcome. If you've seen Heartbreak Ridge with Clint Eastwood, you, you know that phrase quite well. And along the way, he had Stanford head football coach David Shaw talk to the team about their experience in adapting in uncertain conditions. Of course, Stanford football played the final four games of its shortened regular season all on the road. One because of big game it was at Berkeley, but the final three games all had to be played away from Stanford with the regulations that were put in place by, by Santa Clara County. So the Cardinal had to play four games on the road at the end of it, complete relocation of the program. So David Shaw came and talked to the Stanford program about what it took to adapt to those conditions. And he also Jeremy Gunn also zoomed in his college freshman roommate, Tyler Nunnick, who is a Marine, decorated Marine, about adaptability under uncertain conditions and emphasizing the improvise, adapt, and overcome adage. And, and one of the things that, one of the messages that, that the young men got from that was that, look, you know, pressure and stress you know, we're playing soccer here. You know, the pressure and stress is, is being in the military, serving in the armed forces. This is opportunity. And those were the, some of the messages that some of the speakers that Jeremy Gunn had talked to his team and try to get through this situation. Cardinal with the free kick. Floater, the header off the post and just threw, skips off the side. That was Keegan Hughes who was in the area. Got a head on it. As that was kind of a, a knuckleball came down in Hughes and that fell just to the, to the side of the post. Down to Sosa, turns, finds Furch. Tried to connect. Instead, found Abrahamian. Seagal. Nope. Vasquez shuts that down. And back to Longmire. Thomas comes out and sends this one in our direction. Heads up. Oh. 
Back to Longmire. Now the turn on the far side, playing it back once again. Revenue. Greenlee. Silly. Aiming it towards the goal. Ryan goes down in the traffic. Ball rolls harmlessly to Garces while Ryan collects himself. Gets back on his feet. Let's move. Can you keep it alive? Not quite. Falls out of bounds. Goal kick. That was Ollie DeVisser who was trying to hang on to it. Well, next Saturday, Stanford men's soccer is back on the pitch as they welcome Oregon State to the farm. Cards on the bees. And it starts next Saturday at 3 p.m. on Pac-12 Network or download and stream it live wherever you might be with Pac-12 Now. And that could be a very intriguing game with the Beavers making big moves early in the season. Boy, what a... What a hot start. We talked about Zach Ryan and the, the hot start that he's off to right now. Gloria Amanda, holy smokes. He has been on fire to begin the year. Good things happening in Corvallis. Terry Boss and that crew. The faint, Seagal, back to Ryan. Hard shot off of Garces. Boy, well played all the way around. As the faint handled, sent back to Ryan, who sent the laser. And Garces with the lightning quick reaction. Well done all the way around. The work not done for UCLA. Corner kick. Back to Fisher. No. Into the trees. And a goal kick coming for the Bruins. Zach Ryan with two goals at Cal last month as Stanford opened up Pac-12 play with a 3-1 win over in Berkeley. Substitutions for UCLA. Bachman coming back in. Ruben Soria also re-entering the match. Bachland from Oslo went to the Norwegian High School of Elite Sports. That's a pretty cool name for your school. Tingy to Ryan. Silly trying to hang on to it. Pushed back. Cardinal switch field. Jack O'Brien. Now sent forward again, but cleared out by UCLA. Bachman, not the only alum from the Norwegian High School of Elite Sports playing for UCLA. Casper Strom, a freshman for the Bruins, also went to that school. Out of bounds. Furch down the far side. Turning. Ludwig denying. Fights to hang on to it. It's Cody Sunquist in the middle. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. 
And that's overcooked in the direction of Greenlee, but Longmire put a bit too much on it. Bruins have not had many lanes and not much room to operate in, especially as they try to build an attack. Meanwhile, the chipper down the sideline, out of reach for Richmond. Substitutions continuing for the Bruins. Andrew Paoli coming in to replace Jose Sosa. Paoli, as mentioned earlier in the show from San Jose, he's a senior. He was on the U.S. under-18 national team. Got the game-winning goal to beat Portugal in Portugal. That's a, that's a little conversation starter. Bruins try to get things going, but the referee says, no, hang on a sec. I need to, I need to have a chat with Keegan Hughes here for a moment. Go over some things with him before potentially some things boil over. Divisor trying to size it up. Find off a defender. Gets a little bit of help. Back to Sunquist. Intercepted, Cam Silly a step ahead. But it's Paoli taking it the other way. UCLA switches inside the 18 towards the penalty spot. Nope. Silva, he turns and shoots, blocked. Cleared by the Cardinal. Silva with the best look at it, but absorbed by the Stanford defense. And UCLA overall still unable to, to get a clean look and get off the shot. Only one shot on goal to this point for the Bruins in this match. Only two shots all told. <laughs> 60 minutes in. Great to have you with us on the farm. Troy Clarity, Cardinal leading 1 0. Charlie Wynn back in the game for Stanford. On the move, trying to get there. Just a bit beyond his reach. Stanford wants to get the quick restart going off of Wynn's foot, but Zach Ryan not quite ready, perhaps. Virch a bit frustrated. Can't blame him. <laughs> Lone goal in this match to this point, scored by Keegan Tingey. That came in the 40th minute. Tingy with his second goal of the year. Don't look now. He also has three assists on the season, too. He throws it in. Handled by Ryan. Guarded by Reveno. Stanford to throw it in once more. Stanford 4-0-0 on the season. UCLA 1-2-1. Win, win, back post, tried to size it up, shoots and scores! Jack O. Bryan puts the Cardinal ahead 2 0. Let's go! The vision by Stanford as that ball went to a wide open O'Brien who had a little bit of time, we in first, finding the crevice in the UCLA defense and somehow poking it almost perpendicular to O'Brien. Just a little chipper off his foot. No one had O'Brien marked at all. And he is able to knock it through. O'Brien with his first goal of the season. 
to match his other goal against UCLA three years ago in the 2018 season. So both of O'Brien's goals in his Cardinal career have come against the Bruins. So the Cardinal now ahead 2-0. And the Bruins need to start putting some shots in. At least getting some shots, hanging on to the ball. Kevin Diaz has been relatively quiet so far. He has it now. Diaz finds the visser off his thigh. He can't handle it. Boy, that would have been a nifty chance for UCLA there. Greenlee pulls it down. And that's off the top of the net. Boy, the Visser had a had a chance. He had a little bit of space too as he was running towards goal mouth. But the pass just a little bit behind him and off of his thigh. If it had been in front of him, maybe he could have had a shot to maybe poke it and, and put it on frame. The Bruins. If I try the left foot instead, Paoli does, but it's well off target. A miss hit from Paoli. The Bruins will try for another chance. Centered, but cleared. Ludwig able to get it away. Eric Alaski getting involved in the Bruin attack now. Diaz. Out to Silva. Well, it seems like much of the, the Bruin attack has looked like this. They get to a certain point, then they have to, to play it back, and then nothing really comes of it. Not able to build between levels. Tried to find a visor, couldn't do it. Off of Stanford, UCLA to throw it in. Reveno. And perhaps a bit of a miscommunication there as Diaz came towards the ball while Reveno is sending it further forward. Off of Eric Olaski. A quick turn. Trying to set it up. Diaz double marked. Olaski weaving through. Greenlee calls for it. Surrounded by three black and red shirts. Stanford with that swarming defense, giving the Bruins some fits. A clear foul for the Cardinal. Cam Silly with the set down. And an opportunity here for UCLA. Andrew Thomas making sure that everyone is on the same page. The wall is set. And so are we. High and off the back, well off the target. Well, next Saturday, Stanford men's soccer is back on the pitch. They'll welcome Oregon State to the farm. Boy, that should be an intriguing match. Cardinal and the Beavers. And it all starts next Saturday at 3 p.m. on Pac-12 Network or download and stream live wherever you might be with Pac-12 Now. Modern technology is a wonderful, wonderful thing.
Thomas sends it away. Longmire puts it forward. Settled for a moment beyond Diaz's reach. Over the back. Well, now the pace starting to favor UCLA as Reveno maybe misjudging the ball, may have rolled something, but now he is back up on his feet and recollecting himself. Meanwhile, Stanford perhaps sensing the Bruins, pressing a bit more, trying to go on the counter. And here's Ryan. Ryan, the center, the header, the score! The Cardinal on the counter, and Zach Ryan with the gorgeous center to Charlie Wynn. Three nil, Cardinal. Well, for the last few minutes, the Bruins have had chances. Haven't been able to put it through. The Cardinal get one, and they make it count. Charlie Wynn, celebrate, young man. You've just given Stanford a 3-0 lead. And picture perfect service from Zach Ryan. Wynn, the senior from Laguna, Niguel, California, was all Pac-12 honorable mention in 2018 and 2019. Not bad mustache game either. Fought injuries much of the 2018 season, but started to become a bit of a force in the 2019 season. And along the way that year, he scored against UCLA. Well, now UCLA is in desperate, near desperate trouble here in this situation. Down 3-0. Historically, this series dominated by UCLA. In the mixer, Reveno had a foot on it. Greenlee sends it back. Cardinal trying to clear. Official trying to get out of the way. And Ryan off and running. Richmond back to Ludwig. Series dominated by the Bruins. They've won 39. Cardinal have won 15. 10 have been tied, but Stanford has won eight straight and have been unbeaten in the last 12 meetings between these two. In fact, UCLA hasn't scored against Stanford since the 2017 season. That was a penalty kick goal by Brian Olosky. Stanford won that one 5 to 1, by the way. And that was the day that, that Stanford won its Pac-12 championship that season. So it's been tough sledding for the Bruins against the Cardinal of late. And that sledding getting tougher here today to this point. Ryan, we in. And the foul from Silly. And that will put you in the book just about every time. Silly says, hey, no, no, no harm. Diaz is OK. But Silly in the book with the yellow card in the 70th minute. Second card of the game as Ludwig was shown a yellow in the 21st for the Cardinal. Out of bounds, off of Tingy. And a substitution coming up for UCLA. Vasquez in for Reveno.
Greenlee to throw in. Eric Olaski handling it. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying Eric's first and last name out of habit because over the past few years, there have been multiple Olaskis on the Bruin roster. I don't think I quite have to do that anymore. With Eric, the lone Olaski left for the Bruins. A senior from Escondido. Off of Tingy. And the Bruins with the corner. Silva to execute the corner kick. While the Cardinal gets set. Left foot, front post, headed out. Ludwig getting it out of harm's way. Zach Ryan almost found Agosta Nelly, but Wien ends up with it. Walking the tight line. Well, he hung on that to, uh, uh, hung on to that one a bit longer than maybe a whole lot of folks would have thought. Richmond swooping in. Eric Olaski looking for options. On the ground to Sunquist. Garces, way out of the box, sends it forward. Penalty foul call against UCLA. Maybe a chirp or two. Some pleasantries. Social distancing not being in not being observed by Silva and Abrahamian. I mean, this is Santa Clara County, folks. They, they don't play around up here. Down the sideline. Out of bounds. Agostinelli with it. And goal kick is the indication. There's Carlo Agostinelli, redshirt freshman. Has two assists this year. One against the University of San Francisco and another at Cal. And out of bounds. Hustle play by Agostinelli. By the way, it's gone final up in Seattle. The Washington Huskies scoring in the 90th minute to force overtime, and then scoring again in overtime to beat San Diego State 3-2. Dylan Teves with the game-winning penalty kick goal in the 92nd minute. So Washington sneaking a win away from the San Diego State Aztecs. Never a dull moment, never a dull match in Pac-12 men's soccer. Well, right. Grayson Duty checks back into the match for the Bruins. And one other match coming up later on today. It is Cal at Oregon State, 6 p.m. in Corvallis. Now what a start for Oregon State to this point. Thomas claiming that one about 17 yards out. Yeah. 
Beavers have been off to a terrific start. Glory Amanda with 15 points already this season. That just sounds nearly impossible, but Glory Amanda has, has been able to pull it off to this point. Richmond, the left foot center to the spot. Agostinelli turns, shoots, blocked. Garces with the fantastic save, but Ryan with the shot and the score. Garces up to the task the first time around, but the second time through, the Cardinal find a way past. 4-0, Stanford. Well, the play doesn't stop after the save. Agostinelli unleashing Cars is up to the task there, but the Cardinal keep working, keep working. And then Zach Ryan putting it through. That's goal number five for him this season. Celebration for the Cardinal and befuddlement for the Bruins. Second career goal against UCLA for Zach Ryan. Put one in the back of the net against him in the 2018 season. Also has an assist against the Bruins. To his credit, today, Ryan with a goal and an assist. So a three-point day for the veteran from New Jersey. Bruins trying to strike. Sunquist can't get there in time. Falls down to Soria. The turn, Eric Oloski is showing for it here underneath us, but it won't get there, aims for Grayson Duty instead. Zach Ryan with goal number five. All Pac-12 second team in 2018. All Pac-12 honorable mention in 2019 but off to a terrific start so far this year. As he has now scored in four of Stanford's first five games of the season. Ryan on the ground has tried to connect with Ting Ting, hesitated, and Ryan's pass assumed that he was going to keep going. Less than 15 minutes remaining in regulation here on the farm. Great to have you with us. Troy Clarity taking you through it. Cardinal with a 1-0 lead at the half, but it is ballooned to a 4-0 lead. And Zach Ryan with five goals on the season, outscoring or matching UCLA's scoring output for the entire season by himself. And he's had some, some big goals along the way. Had the, the game winner at Akron. Zips are a, a handle to deal with. That game winner coming with 70 seconds left at Akron in the early portion of the, the 2019 season. And we mentioned it at the, at the start of the show. Jeremy Gunn says Zach Ryan is as complete a player as he's ever been. It's a process. You don't just, you generally don't just walk onto campus day one and be a finished product. Setting up for Wien. Wien can't get off the touch, was altered a bit, and he couldn't hang on to it. Boy, Wien had a clear path to goal, but perhaps a goal saving little poke by a UCLA defender. As Garces is able to take that one. Charlie Wien. He put one in the back of the net in the 68th minute earlier today. Coming down just past the midfield stripe. Oh, 
And Thomas comes up and smothers it. Thomas with one official save today. Hasn't had to face a whole lot of shots this afternoon. Left foot, Augustinelli slipped down as he was letting that one loose. Didn't have quite enough on it. And Garza is able to make the easy collection. Richmond has had some nice moments in this match. Fisher sends it forward. No one quite there. No offside calls in this match to this point. On the ground towards De Visser, but instead it's Stanford on the spot. The Visser for UCLA from Los Altos, California, just, just right down the road. A few Bay Area kids on this Bruin roster. The Visser, we mentioned Andrew Paoli earlier. Ben Reveno from San Jose. Cody Sunquist, a Northern California kid from Granite Bay, but that's closer to Sacramento. Less than 10 minutes to go. Sosa sends it out of bounds. Stanford to throw it in. Substitutions continue for the Cardinal. Noah Adnan has come on for Stanford. That was a couple of minutes ago. He's a freshman from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Connor Evans, a freshman from Portland. There he is in the match, appearing in his fourth game this season. Well, the road ahead for UCLA. They will host the Washington Huskies, who won by the skin of their teeth today in overtime against San Diego State. That game next Sunday down on the UCLA campus. And then UCLA hits the road again, coming back to the Bay Area on March 20th to face the California Golden Bears. And then four days later, heading down the road to face San Diego State. The Boomer right on frame to Thomas. And then these two teams meet once again down in Westwood on March 28th to close out the month of March for the UCLA Bruins. A team with youth and a team that has been a bit shorthanded in some respects from a health standpoint with some injuries, especially to some of their, their key players unable to go 100% full bore, Eric Olaski being one of them. Haven't seen Marconi Pimentel today. He's a senior originally from Brazil. He's actually only played six minutes this season. We haven't seen him so far today. Gostinelli. Trying to set it up. Richmond turns the corner. Richmond. And it skips off a UCLA defender into Garces' arms. Meanwhile, the road ahead for the Cardinal. We've been telling you about it throughout the show. They host Oregon State next week. A game that will loom rather large in the early going of the Pac-12 men's soccer race. To the near side, Richmond, the feint to try to get himself a little space, but instead it's sent out of bounds. Well, the 2021 Pac-12 Men's Basketball Tournament presented by New York Life is about to tip off live from Las Vegas, for my favorite words. Tune to Pac-12 Network 
to see who emerges victorious and takes home the hardware. Coverage begins on Wednesday, March 10th on Pac-12 Network or download and stream live wherever you might be with Pac-12 Now. Always a fantastic event. Of course, the women's tournament wraps up tomorrow. With Stanford very much in the mix there. But men's basketball coming up next week from Las Vegas. Zach Ryan's been money today, a goal and an assist today. He comes off with substitutions all the way around for the Cardinal, Reese DeSoto, Aiden Weaver, Leighton Purchase, and Ryan Dunn among those appearing for the Cardinal. Also, Kyle Orchu is in goal, replacing Andrew Thomas for the Cardinal. Left foot towards the back post, and Liam made contact with that post. That wasn't Wien, actually, that was Aiden Weaver, the freshman from Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania, playing in his third match of the year. Well, good ball from Agostinelli, and it almost snuck towards Weaver. So the Cardinal reinforcements trying to put its stamp on this match. And if you're just joining us, so Seni Buda, the reigning Pac-12 freshman of the year, unavailable for Stanford as of now, as he is out with an injury. Jeremy Gunn and the Cardinal coaching staff hopes to have him back for the second half of the season. Less than five minutes to go. Furch, who unfortunately hasn't had too much to do for UCLA. Divisor. Furch again. Trying to set up the Divisor. Who almost got there. Nice ball and on the move to Soda. Shielded off and shut down by Vasquez. DeSoda giving chase. Out of bounds. And Sanford to throw it in. Dave Siegel coming in. So he replaces Charlie William. Siegel with the big goal last week down at San Diego State. Just one last week for the Cardinal, four so far today. Can they get a fifth? The Soda working for it. The shot kick saved by Garces. Boy, fantastic reaction. Justin Garces on the spot, and he's, he's had to show off his, his quick reflexes on a few occasions throughout this match. Pulling off the kick save in that sequence. On the ground, out of Garces' reach. Garces came into this one 0-3 against the Cardinal. It appears that he'll fall to 0-4. DeSoda. DeSoda. DeSoda! Why? Soda, the redshirt junior from Aurora, Colorado. Got an assist earlier this year against the San Francisco Dons. Made the honor roll, the academic honor roll for the Pac-12 in the 2019 season. And finally seeing some playing time for that young man. Yeah. UCLA will Try to go off and running here. On a sprint to the corner. Soria turning on the Jets. Yeah, yeah, 
The Cardinal bringing it back the other way. Less than two minutes to go. Foul on Sosa and the Bruins. Sago trying to fight off Reveno. Devisser got it away and got clipped with the contact just outside of the box. And Orchu, I believe, has been shown the yellow. Yes, there was the, the contact. You can actually hear it from here, from our from our vantage point. It's Kyle Orchu, the backup keeper for the Cardinal, the redshirt sophomore from St. John, Indiana, got the start at San Diego last week. Two saves and a shutout. But Orchu in the books. Silva and Furch. Standing over it for UCLA. There's the wall. And right on frame to Orchu. Orchu able to knock it down, keep it out of the back of the net. Just the second shot on goal for UCLA in this match. It's from Furch. Had a good idea, maybe not quite enough on it. Five shots all total for the Bruins compared to 10 shots on goal for the Cardinal. And 20 shots total for Stanford. But the Cardinal able to break through with three in the second half and break open what had been a, a closely contested game, a kind of match that we expected to see coming in, but Stanford able to solved the Bruins in the second half. Big games against Oregon State and Washington looming in Stanford's immediate future. Beavers next week here at Kagan and the Huskies up in Seattle in two weeks time. But today it's the Stanford Cardinal staying in the win column. It's a final and for the ninth consecutive time Stanford beats UCLA. The final score, Cardinal four, Bruins nil. Keegan Tingey struck first for Stanford in the 40th minute. And then after the break, things really came fast and furious for the goal scoring for the Cardinal. Jack O'Brien in the 62nd minute, then Charlie Wien got on the board in the 68th minute, followed by Zach Ryan and his fifth goal of the year in the 76th minute of action. Stanford now 5-0-0 on the season, 3-0-0, and still atop the Pac-12 at this point, while UCLA falls to 1-3-1 on the season and 0-2-1 in Pac-12 play. UCLA Washington next week down in Westwood, while Stanford hosts the Oregon State Beavers next week right here at Kagan. Four goals for the Stanford Cardinal as they have knocked off UCLA for the ninth straight time. An impressive win for the third-ranked Cardinal. On behalf of our terrific Pac-12 Network crew, I'm Troy Clarity. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Once again, the final score, Stanford 4, UCLA 0. Stay safe, stay happy, stay sane, and back the pack.